I have published a few days ago this oscillator, test oscillator, with a field effect transistor. So I want to refer to my earlier video when you want to make it. In this video I want to show how you can use that test oscillator in inductance measurements. And also how to discriminate good and bad coils. And with good and bad I mean that uh, good coils create a proper sine wave. There is a fixed relation between the frequency and the inductance. And here I have some coils with a known inductance. Uh, they um, came with my dip meter. And I've measured these coils. And when you um, switch, move this switch to the upper position or the lower position, uh, you switch an extra capacitor here from 1 nanofarad. That also means that it has an effect on the oscillation frequency. But whatever that all may be, you can derive from the frequency here, for instance, 511 uh, kilohertz related to this coil from my dip meter, uh, the inductance. So when you read on your counter when it's connected to this test oscillator a uh, frequency from 510 kilohertz or 1.08 megahertz, you know that the inductance is 173 microhenry. And you can also make a table to see uh, which frequency is related to which inductance. So these are more or less the most important inductances to make a radio on shortwave up to approximately 12 megahertz from say uh, 500 kilohertz up to 12 megahertz. These are the values from the inductance from the coils. And here you see how all these coils were made. You can also wind coils yourself, no problem at all. I've, I've done that many times and I will show uh, some coils that I've made. Ok, let's look at this coil. The lowest frequency coil from my dip meter. It says 5 one one kilohertz <coughs> sorry kilohertz when I push the switch it goes to 1.09 megahertz and that's also visible in this table okay um, that was all to tell about simple inductance measurements with this oscillator. Now we go to the next issue, uh, a good and a bad coil. And with good and bad I mean does it generate a pure sine wave? Well, um, here is the first coil that we are going to test. A coil made for 100 kilohertz up to 400 kilohertz and that's here wound on a toilet roll, glued with glue for PVC and this coil reads when I put the switch from the oscillator into a certain position 1.2 uh, megahertz. And when I put the switch from the oscillator in another position it reads 565 uh, kilohertz. So that is more or less the bandwidth from this coil. And you can see on this coil all kinds of tabs. So when you shortcut the coil, 
for instance I here and now I shortcut the coil, you can see that the frequency goes up. Now the coil is shortcut. A part of the coil is not active any longer and now it goes back to a lower frequency. On the scope you can see that too. Higher frequency, lower frequency. Again to some other coil. Um, this coil for instance, the blue one. I found that this quite strange coil, the blue one, uh, made uh, a frequency on 4.9 megahertz. Uh, when I do the switch on 10.3 megahertz and on that frequency 10.3 megahertz had a quite good sine wave. So I did not expect that from that sloppy coil. So useful on these frequencies. Go back to another coil that does not have such a good properties. I hope it will oscillate. Well it doesn't. So strange. Going to the next coil. This coil for instance made with very thin wire worked on 701 kilohertz and when I switch it on, on 348 kilohertz and it has a good waveform. So This is the waveform, good waveform. So when you want to make a coil, do experiments. That's the only thing that I can tell. When you want to make a radio that works on say 5 megahertz or 10 megahertz, do some experiments with coils here like this on the PVC tube or on cardboard, etc. Uh, etc. Et and uh, uh, experiment as long till you find a coil that works properly in the frequency band that you want to use and has a good waveform.